Joining us now in Studio B is a player agent at 360 Sports, Evan Brennan, who is, I mean, between the end of the college football season and leading up to the draft is a ridiculously busy guy who doesn't get much sleep, probably has like seven <laughs> mobile phones. <laughs> but Evan, well, thanks for taking some time to come and talk to us about the, the lead up to the NFL draft. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thanks so much. You know, that brings up a good point. How many cell phones do you have? Uh, too many. <laughs> too many. <laughs> Got to keep track of them all. That's unbelievable. You're representing Andrew Idy. Obviously, BYU fans are interested in their BYU guys. He has transformed his body. He's getting a lot of interest uh, from NFL teams. What, did you, what do you like most about Andrew Eide as your client? What can he bring to an NFL team? Uh, he gets it. Uh, mindset's a huge deal when I represent NFL players. Do they have an NFL mindset? Are they ready to go take somebody else's job? As you know, NFL teams are going to bring 90 guys into camp but only 53 are going to make an active roster with an additional about 10 guys that will make a practice squad. And so how I coach my players, how I mentor my players is, look, this is an opportunity for you. You're going to go to an NFL camp. If you can't beat out the guy next to you, you're going to be on that next plane home. But if you can, you can make a lot of money and make a career out of it. Is there a specific position that a lot of teams have kind of zeroed in on Andrew for? I mean, because I know he played guard at BYU, but I, I know he, he played could, every position. Yeah, yeah he played every. He played every position. So, I mean, have they if they kind of focused in on one specifically for him? Well, he played left tackle at BYU, and that means he's got great feet and he can move. And obviously at pro day, he showed he's got a little bit of athletic ability. But where they really like Andrew is both at the guard and center position. The idea that he could come in, if a guy goes down on the interior of the offensive line, take over at left guard, right guard, or even at center and snap the ball is a tremendous asset that he has. What is your job like right now preparing for the NFL draft? Uh, I'm kind of the intermediary. I've got a lot of teams calling, asking about players, if they're healthy, what's going on with them. I'm setting up workouts. I'm setting up visits. I'm communicating with my players, what the NFL teams are telling me, vis-a-vis -vis what they need to be working on, vis-a-vis -vis what their draft stock is. So it's a lot of communication back and forth, back and forth, a lot of logistics. How, how do you weigh what you think teams want you to hear? or like tell? How, how do you weed through – the I'm trying to think of the right word, uh, the nonsense that gets spread around this time of year. Well, there's a lot of that. Teams are, are really, really secretive. These are essentially trade secrets, if we're to talk legally about uh, what they're doing uh, with their grades on players. And so you kind of got to read the tea leaves. You learn to trust certain people. You learn not to trust certain people. You learn that certain things don't mean exactly what they are. They mean something else. And you kind of develop this kind of coded language, as it were, as to what your player is probably going to do in the draft and what he's not going to do in the draft. How do you keep guys optimistic and positive on draft day when the rounds start to drag on and they're anticipating, like, I don't know, because three or four experts said, you're a fifth-round draft grade or a sixth-round draft grade or even a seventh, and then their name's not called. What, what do you say to them in those moments? I say you're going to get an opportunity. It doesn't matter if you're drafted in the fifth, sixth, seventh round. It doesn't matter if you go undrafted. All those guys have to make a team. We know that you're going to get an opportunity. Um, it just should make you that much hungrier to go and seize that opportunity, wherever it may be. I have to imagine that one of the tricky things, and we were talking about how you weed through the nonsense from, from NFL personnel and whatnot, but when you go out to sign a player, how do you manage telling them what they want to hear versus what they need to hear? It's a balance. Um, you want to be optimistic. You want to show faith in them. You want to show that th this is kind of a range of what can happen. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to fill their mind up with garbage. And so there's, there's got to be kind of a basis in reality, maybe a stretch to, hey, if this happens, this happens, this can happen. And then, but this is kind of what teams are saying. It's up to you to make that even better. You're in a job that a lot of people, I would imagine, are like, yeah, that'd be a cool job to have. How do you get into this line of work? It's a wild, wild deal. Um, there's a lot of talent you got to have. I went to law school, um, and so that's probably one of the prerequisites for the most part. It's having connections. Um, you know, I, I knew a lot of people when I went to BYU years ago uh, that I ran across paths with that really helped me get in. And you got to be able to sell. You got to be a good salesman. If you have those kind of connections, those kind of skills, you got a real shot, and you've got to have a real passion for helping kids make it in the league. Pro Day is always a fun day for obviously those participating, but football fans in general, and, and I've had the opportunity to go to several of BYU's Pro Days. You were raving mm -hmm. uh, after BYU's Pro Day a week or two ago just about how well it was run and how it was really second to none. I've not been to other Pro Days. 
Where does BYU stack up in terms of that, and why were you so impressed with what you saw? Well, I was echoing what a scout was telling me. I was standing next to a scout, and he was telling me, hey, Evan, this is one of the best protests in the country, if not the best. Um, they do a lot of things. I mean, I walked in, they got a nice spread, things to eat, they're treating the scouts right. <laughs> They've got uh, the way they set up the entire event process with those big, big signs. They've got a big, giant kind of jumbotron feature where you can see the events. They have all the displays of what guys are running. And in fact, they were actually getting those numbers from pro personnel. That wasn't some guy, BYU guy with a clock. They were asking a scout for those numbers. Um, I've been to dozens and dozens, if not 50 or so pro days in my career doing this. I've never seen anything like that, and most scouts haven't either. Evan Brennan, player agent at 360 Sports, with us on BYU Sports Nation in Studio B. When you sign on to represent a player, what is the first thing you do with that person? Uh, it's We kind of have a moment where we kind of sit down and, and have a reality check. Um, all the sales is over, and we begin the process, and I say, hey, I've been talking with NFL teams, and this is what we got to do. Let's set goals. What do we want to accomplish? And I give the player an opportunity to kind of set the goals he wants to accomplish. And then that kind of sets the entire page of how I'm going to represent him and help him accomplish those goals. In terms of, of Andrew specifically, what was that conversation like with him? And, and what was the plan that you two set forth? So we sat down. Uh, I remember doing it right there in San Diego, right there in a hotel down there in San Diego. We had this discussion. And I said, look, you're going to need to shock some people. You're a guy that was a grad transfer from an FCS school. Um, NFL scouts are telling me that you can play but you're going to have to really make some believers out of non-believers. And how you're going to do that is really showing up on pro day and putting up some great numbers and showing that you can play multiple positions on the offensive line. And those were our goals. What did he do for himself at BYU's pro day? He showed a lot of things. Actually, we filmed him snapping um, at BYU's pro day, and I sent that out to NFL teams, and I've been getting a ton of phone calls since. That in and of itself, and I've told Andrew this, is probably the most important thing he did is showed that he could snap the ball efficiently because teams don't see a lot of guys that are intelligent enough to play center, athletic enough to play guard, and can do a lot of things. That's huge. Obviously, the goal for everybody that gets into the NFL draft is to be drafted. I mean, that's, that's what everybody wants. We obviously know that a major part of the draft is free agent signings. Mm -hmm. How early is the groundwork for some of that laid? Very early on. I mean, teams are communicating now, hey, we really like your guy, Evan. We really like this guy. And, I, and my you know, communication back is, well, are you going to draft him? Are you going to draft him? And they kind of give you this, mm, which tells me sixth, seventh priority free agent. And the draft itself will take on a life of its own. And if certain cards fall your way, certain guys come off the board early, your guy's going to get drafted. Certain cards don't ha fall your way, he's going to go priority free agent. So you prep your client. You try to do some kind of some interesting leverage moves to kind of help your client along that process with the teams. Try to see if you can't poke him into the sixth or seventh round, but you prepare him either way. What are your emotions like? during that three-day period of the NFL draft between Thursday and Saturday? Uh, it's, it's changed. Um, I'm a lot more even keeled than probably I used to be because I just more and more years and years of experience in doing this, kind of seen everything. Um, but really, it's keep my client level-headed. Um, if you go undrafted, you've literally got seconds to make a decision that could shape your entire NFL career. And your client is really, really relying on you to help make that decision. And so if you're flustered, if you're in an emotional state, you can't make a quality business decision, even with all those numbers and analytics laid out. So the number one goal for me, remain calm, remain business savvy, and you'll help your clients make a better business decision. How is BYU, the football program, and the product that comes out of BYU, how is that viewed in the NFL? Uh, it's, it's kind of fluctuated a little bit. I think right now they're, they're getting back where they need to be. Uh, High-quality kids, good athletes, teams don't really have to question their character. You actually see probably less – private visits or questions at the combine because BYU character is so high with among players. Um, there probably was a couple of years where teams questioned how much they wanted to really, really excel at the highest level. And I think that the new coaching staff's gone a long way in showing that uh, the kids that come to BYU, they're not making any sacrifices by desiring to play in the NFL. What is it like for you to watch one of your clients reach their goals? What What is that like? That is nirvana. That is elation times a million. Um, you know, I put in hours and hours, tens of hours, hundreds of hours over these last few months uh, trying to help these guys accomplish their goals. And when they are accomplished, which may not be realized for quite some time, uh, the elation is and the rush is just huge. Love it. What is the next couple of weeks looking like then for, for Andrew and for other clients that you have? More and more communication, um, trying to – pit teams against each other, um, say, hey, by the way, this team's looking at 
Andrew, this team's looking at Andrew. Where you guys sit? Where do you guys sit? Just want to let you know, um, this team's looking at him. And you try to create a market based off that. And so that's a lot of what I'm doing is kind of doing that kind of business. What do you anticipate will happen for Andrew on draft day? Anything I've heard. I mean, I was um, if there's a picture on me on, on the BYU website that shows me standing amongst several scouts as Andrew was bench pressing. And a lot of what I'm doing is just having small chat about where, where do you see my guy going? Where do you see about this? I've heard sixth and seventh, and I've heard priority free agent. And honestly, the answer to that is how does the draft shape up? There's not a lot of centers that are drafted, about five to seven. And if a lot of those centers come off the board real quick and teams see a very athletic, smart guy that could play a number of different positions, you could see Andrew sneak in. That could not happen. And so that just totally is flip of the coin, have to see what happens. But I'd say six, seventh priority free agent. I'm not sure if this is a question that you can answer, but it, have there been any specific teams show significant interest in, in Andrew? Uh, I've had calls from about 20 teams. Um, some teams have been more interested than others. I mean, I think Twitter um, has some pretty accurate reports of some teams that have shown interest. Um, if you go on there, you, you'll see some teams. I probably won't drop you know specific team names, but I've had calls from you know about 20-plus teams on Andrew. Wow. Evan Brennan with this player agent at 360 Sports representing Andrew Eide. How many clients do you have on an annual basis? Uh, we try to take on, at my firm, where we have four agents, you know, we try to take on between eight and 12. We want a good ratio where guys feel like they're, you know, really getting a lot of focus, a lot of time spent on them. But, you know, we have to make a living. And so we need a few more than one player, obviously, to make it so that we can make money. Uh, but it's that balance between, you know, getting guys in the league, but also giving that personal attention. So between eight and 12 for our firm. What has, has the movie Jerry Maguire helped or hurt what you do? Uh, <laughs> probably a little bit of both. I mean, <laughs> it's given some exposure, and some of that exposure has been good, and some of that exposure has been negative. I mean, Hollywood always has a unique spin on what we do. Uh, but it's some days it's that awesome kind of Jerry Maguire feeling, and some days it's just grunt work. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a rival agency, Evan? <laughs> There are, there are a lot of those guys. I mean, uh, you ever had to yell, show me the money into a cell phone? <laughs> I, I have not. I have not. No discussions of the Quan, nothing like that. Yeah, very, good. <laughs> very good. What's life like for you the day after the NFL draft? Or I should say, when your guys are signed, like what, what's the down season for you, if there is one? Uh, June is usually the quietest month for me, but uh, I start talking to scouts again, getting the scouting reports as early as, you know, late May, early June. And so there really is no real off season. I may take a week or two off in June, but uh, I'm right back on the grind, getting my guys ready for OTAs, training camp, and all that uh, in July. What are the rules in terms of how early you can communicate with a potential client? Uh, it depends. There's obviously there's the NFLPA rules. I'm certified by the NFLPA. There's federal law involved in that. There's state law, but then there's individual school rules. And so you you know having a legal background helps you kind of navigate that a little bit, and it kind of varies place to place. Um, as long as you're not providing any, any impermissible benefits, for the most part, it's pretty okay to start chatting with them. I am fascinated by all of this. When somebody signs on with you, what kind of an agreement are they stepping into? Like, is this a lifetime agent thing? Or, like, how, how does that all work? Uh, so the NFLPA gives us what's called a standard representation agreement. So every, and a, and a, every NFL player signs the same with his agent. Um, there may be some addendum that exists that, uh, you know, if any payment for anything. Uh, but the agreement is kind of at will either way. I can terminate a player whenever I feel like, and vice versa. He can terminate me whenever I like. So pretty standardized. The NFLPA makes it pretty cut and dry. Wow. This was uh, <laughs> very enlightening, my friend. We appreciate you no coming problem. in during your very busy schedule, obviously, to uh, promote Andriotti and, uh, and 360 Sports. And we wish you success and congratulations on everything you've accomplished. Appreciate it.